easy going well welcome back to nomadies here on the human nature podcast where i'm overqualified to talk about these topics because i am a human being and here i am with my special guest my special cousin who are you i'm simon aka someone <laughs> london town shone gansebsi s money <laughs> so we're here in the uk specifically in london specifically in edgeware that's all we're gonna go with the details i'm um, enjoying the winter weather out here and i just wanted to bring shoney on today because uh shoney does some pretty interesting stuff in his personal life but before we get into that shoney um yeah who are you i am habasha i just born london raised universal minded and an explorer of knowledge, both hidden and right in the open. Okay. <laughs> I like that. What's <laughs> up? Uh, and how did you, wh- wh- where'd you come from before the UK? You said Ethiopia, right? Yes, I was born in Addis in 1988. Okay. So I'm still an 80s baby. Okay, okay. And do you know Calvin Harris? I do know Calvin Harris. You know that song? Which one? I got love for you if you're born in the 80s. The 80s. So you got love for you? You got love for me. Okay. 80s babies are special. <laughs> no copy right here. Because <laughs> it came out some other place. <laughs> so, uh, why'd you come to the UK from Ethiopia? Do you know? Family ties. Mm-hmm. Financial ties. Mm-hmm. The weather. Mm. The Wait, food. Being better here? Or? No, no, I'm being sarcastic. Oh. Obviously the last was year, the weather. And the food. <laughs> I was going to say. Lordy, lordy, we came in the <laughs> early 90s. <laughs> Life was good, but you had to acclimatize. Yeah. Food in the UK, I heard, was not very good about 20 years ago. Yeah, and it was even worse about 40, 50, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Boy, the main treat was egg and chips. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Chips. Chips means fries here. I'm still. Fries. <laughs> chips. Nice. Chunky chips. I'm not going to like. I like chips better. It sounds better. Fish and chips, mate. Fish and chips, mate. Would you like some chicken and chips? Um, I had some chicken and chips last night, so I think I'm going to pass on that one. Though. Sweet. But I appreciate you. Today's Sunday, so you're meant to have a roast on a Sunday. A roast. Lamb so beer. Friday, fish and chips. Yep. Saturday. Take out and beer. And the Sunday? Sunday roast. Sunday roast. Wow. That's how they do it here in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hungry already. <laughs> you're getting hungry. All right. So... Um, you've been living here for what, over 20 years, right? Came when you were about like 10 years old. Came around when I was seven years old. Seven years old. Wow. So you've been here for over 20, 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Longer than I've been alive. London is now officially home. Okay. I feel when I'm in Addis, I feel like I'm away from home. Mm. If that makes sense in a weird way. I hear it. I hear it. Your, most of your personality and your conception of self has been established here. Yep. Right. Okay. Okay. So now that you're uh, here in the UK, what would you say is so riveting about being in the UK uh, versus, say, the US? If you know much about the US. Unfortunately, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Newsom is trash. <laughs> and he's trying to run for president, which is a big disaster waiting to happen. Anyway, LA, LA politics. LA politics. <laughs> This is, um, this is a UK man talking. U- UK, <laughs> UK politics has been topsy turvy, as they say, for mm. at least fifteen years. Mm. So that ain't that bad here. But still, UK, I prefer it because companies don't have that much power to actually destroy us whilst we're giving them money. Mm. There's better regulations here, mm. and as you can attest, better quality of food. My stomach's been hurting for the past three days, so. That's the liquor. (laughs) (laughs) Got me. (laughs) It's possible. I will say I was looking at like the Kellogg's box that they have in this house. And I was ironically looking at one before when I was in Minnesota. And I noticed that in the States, the Kellogg's, the non cornflakes version has, sorry, the cat just opened the door. I did not know she could come (laughs) She could go out herself. <laughs> She's advanced. Kitty is the boss of the house. <laughs> Kitty is the fourth kid in this house. Kitty is also her name. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, very creative. I'm going to close that. So we got her as a little kitten and we're like, what name should we give her? So we said, oh, 
She looks like such a cute kitten. Let's just call her Kitty. Kitty. She's stuck from now on. Actually, her name is Kitty. It's not Kitty. It's Kitty. Kitty. Make sure to emphasize the A, mate. So yeah, I was looking at the Kellogg's box, and the regular Kellogg's cornflakes has more sugar than the than the frosted flakes, um, in the U.S. And also the amount of added ingredients that I noticed uh, once coming here was insane. I mean, just all these you know words you can barely pronounce. Um, here just a lot less ingredients, kind of just straight to the point of what they're trying to design and create. So there's that. There's the food quality. Uh, you also, a lot of the water you buy here is just spring water on its own. The same brand. I forgot the one that you guys had. Um, Kirkland? The Kirkland water. Oscar. Yeah. That one in the States is, pur is purified. Here it's spring water. Really? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We think Kirkland's fresh here. Well, it's, it's not the... It's, Evian, darling. Evian. <laughs> <laughs> it still is. It didn't yeah, I mean, it's Kirkland, you know. I'm, I'm a Crystal Geyser guy, <laughs> but no brand promotions until you're trying to sponsor me. Yeah. Hit me up, Crystal Geyser. Um, okay, okay, okay. So, UK is cool. Also, Actually, I like the UK because you're very close to Africa. Uh, you're yeah. very close to so many other European countries. So, so two-hour flight, you can be in a completely different different cultures such as yeah. italy yeah or three hour flight you're in africa and tips of morocco yeah it's, you can't really get that same experience if you're kind of stuck in a massive continent in america that's true yeah the flight here to Ethiopia is very cheap and the flights are super cheap yeah if you book early book early guys be prepared there you go nomadius way you got a book early plan <laughs> failing to prepare is preparing to fail come on now Preach. Come on now. It's Sunday after all. <laughs> <laughs> it is Sunday. That's why I came to church. This is my church right now. So, all right. So, you know, the people are wondering because maybe they've seen you. They're like, I've seen this guy somewhere. Is it because he's Ethiopian? Is it because of his hair? Uh, when I first met uh, Shoney about four years ago, uh, yeah, he is my cousin, but we only really met four years ago. He looked and still looks exactly like the Ethiopian paintings. Maybe you guys have seen the way his eyes are here. Oh. I've got one. Oh, look. I'll show you this on the laptop. Look, it's right there. That's my tattoo. Oh, yeah. Especially with this haircut. Yeah, with that. Let's see if it pulls up. Oh, he needs to get a fade. Hey, look at that. Look at that. That's you. That's yeah, you. Yeah, that is kind of me, bro. Look. Right there. Angelic. Here, let's show the people. An angel. Wait. Can you see it? Look. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So that was my first impression, and this uh, location we're currently doing our podcast interview in is where Shone and I shared a room. There was two beds in here. Now things have changed. Shone has moved out. Shone is a grown man now. And uh, the reason I say you've probably seen Shone is because Shone has a very interesting profession that he does. What do you do, Shone? Hollywood gang. I do TV, film, commercials, a bit of modeling, a lot of background work. So you might have spotted me in some far distance, pretending to have a coffee in the background of a shootout. Who knows? Okay, so extra acting, right? Extra acting, acting, modeling, okay. music videos, okay. corporate videos, uh -huh. social media videos, as you saw recently. Yep, yep, on YouTube. With Amanda from the UK. Yep, yep, yep. Gang business. <laughs> <laughs> now, now doing uh, interviews, podcasts, and Nomadius. Um, okay, so how'd you get into acting or, or modeling? Let's start. Uh, but, 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 it was one of my homies, mm. Tim. Shout so out to Tim. He's from Congo. Okay. And this was maybe, let's see, 15, 15 20 years ago. Mm. They wanted to get some Somali people to be in scenes. So he's an actor. And he kept on getting put forward to play East Africans, Somalians. Uh, but he's it didn't look right at all. Yeah. yeah, he's Central West African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the scenes looked ridiculous. There was a shortage of people. Firstly, there was a shortage of young black people in the industry. Mm -hmm. Plus East Africans, mm -hmm. Ethiopian, Eritrean, Somalian. Yeah. So he said, yo, holler at these agencies. Holler at me, mate. They need you. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. So I signed up and they're like, can we get you to play a Somali pirate next week? Oh, really? You're going you're gonna to go to the South Coast and you're going to go on a container ship in t -shirt, in a t-shirt, slippers and an AK. South Coast of London? South Coast of the country. Oh, UK. Sorry, that's what I meant. Okay. And, and yeah, it was a very... So wait, first were you in Captain job. Phillips? No, I was in oh. a... <laughs> I was in something else before Captain Phillips. Okay, so you are, you are not the captain. 
I am not the captain. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my first job with the agency I signed up with was for a proper acting role. Hmm. And they took me, they made, they let me have a life experience, which just sounds insane. You're taken off to a container ship and speed boats, mm -hmm. AKs and action scenes. And I'm like, are you guys that desperate for East Africans? Mm. They just take somebody who's fresh to the game. Mm. I guess they were. And now I'm here. Maybe you're just talented. They can see your, your talent. The director was like, mate, mate, excuse me. Why are you smiling? <laughs> can you stop smiling, please? You're meant to be hijacking people. <laughs> I was so You're excited. just happy to be there. Yeah, this container ship was massive. <laughs> it was insane. And you're just standing there thinking, a couple of hours ago, I was in London. Living <laughs> a regular life. What's going on here? So your life changed from that day on? In some aspects, yeah. How many, how many, how, how many years ago was that? Maybe 11 years, maybe. Wow, so you've been in for like 11 years. Yeah, on and off. Okay. Recently, I've been doing a, a lot more. Okay. Okay. Over the past five years. Okay. But you get to have a lot of different experiences. Go to you get put in places that you'd never be allowed access into, like mm -hmm. the Freemasons Hall. Mm -hmm. Some films book it out, and then that's our holding area or wow. where we eat and what have you. Wow! So you get access to hidden locations. Let's put it like that. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. So, what do you see behind the scenes that we don't get to see? A lot of drama, <laughs> in terms of scheduling, time delays. In case you're wondering, you said scheduling. I know accents are oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this guy to me yesterday, what did he say? Uh, oh, uh, someone was said o Omega. I said w Omega, Omega. Then they said Omega. Yeah, oh, Omega. Okay, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, scheduling. <laughs> so the film industry is insane. They throw so much money in. 30 second scenes that you're like are you mad and high pressure assistant directors have to keep on top of things and everyone's running around trying to make entertainment happen so yeah it's uh a lot of effort for entertainment and behind the scenes people are under pressure the cameraman the directors the lighting people it's always on edge boom 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 boom, boom. Mm, mm. so it's never really that, that calm on set Photo shoots are a lot easier and calmer and chilled. Whereas films, they have sh certain schedules that they have to meet yeah. and everything's broken down. So you've got two hours max to do the scene. If you don't do the scene, you're going into overtime, paying an extra 10K just for the lighting people. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Mutting, as they say. And how long do films take to be filmed? Depending on the film, of course. But let's just give me an example of a film that you were in, <clears throat> how long it took to be filmed. Current one, Exodus, Bob Marley. Uh -huh. The trailers have been out. Right? Yeah, you said you're not done filming though, right? You are done filming. Uh, they're, they're, they're still improving certain scenes. Interesting. Let's, let's like that. So they can put a trailer out without it being done. Exactly. Trailers tend to come out a lot earlier. Uh -huh. and then they're still working away at things. Okay, Hollywood. Things, All yeah. right, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. They're pulling a fast thing. All right, pulling the fast <laughs> as they always do. Okay. So Bob Marley. And what are you doing in that movie again? I am an enthusiastic, cheering crowd member mm. in his first European tour. So oh. a big Afro. Is that when he came to London, actually? No, I think he went to mainland Europe. If okay. I'm not mistaken, Germany was one of them. One of the Scandinavian countries. Okay. France. Okay. Did you enjoy that being that film? It was lovely. Yeah. They made curry mutton for us on one of the days. Oh, Spicy. really? Oh, my God. Uh, Bob Marley's son was munching away with us. Which one? Ziggy? I'm not sure. Stephen. Julian. Uh, Damien. One of them. 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 One of the original whalers was there munching away with us. Okay. Everybody was respectful and cool and chill. I love it. The music was on point. They were performing it live. The main actor. I know some people are impressed, but <coughs> was working mm. his socks off, sweating yeah. on set. I've heard jumping that. Jumping around. He put in. He he put his soul into it. Ja! You're gonna see. Jamma. You're, you're gonna see the film. Jamma. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Although I'm a little skeptical, but hearing from Shane, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to check it out. I'm gonna be looking for Shane in the back and stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. So one thing I'm wondering, um, because you know this is the Human Nature podcast, and so to get into the more behavioral side of things, um, do you think the extra actors are important as the main actors in the film? And if so, why? 
Mm, I wouldn't say they're as, they are as important. Mm-hmm. I would say they're an essential part of the film, but the main actors have way more pressure on their shoulders. Mm. If something happens to them, if they have a little mishap, if they aren't feeling certain energies on set, it can tank the whole production. So mm. they are super important. So if an extra messes up on scene, that doesn't mean they're always going to redo it? They will redo it. They give you a couple of chances and if you keep messing up, you're out. they're like, set this one up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're called the supporting artists. Uh, so wait, that you're called? Oh, the other person who comes in no, after? We're called, everyone's called a supporting artist. Oh, interesting. Extra has been kind of done away with over the past 10 mm, years. I like that. So you are a supporting artist. You are a support. Because anything extra you can take out. Yeah, right? it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different way of looking at it. Interesting. That, that is very interesting. Because I was thinking, like, with supporting artists, you add a factor to the film that why, as an audience, we think it's actually real. Because, like, you see people, you see people eating and you see people oh, doing whatever they're doing. And then sometimes uh, the supporting artist is so good that you can't tell whether they actually are supporting artists or was this filmed like is because you know in such a big crowd you're like you're telling me everybody within this film is aware that a film is being filmed right now and that the fact Uh, that we're not noticing these things now we're caught into the film itself mm, would you say absolutely some scenes i don't know if everybody is involved because there have been times where they have Mm. some of us and then everybody else is just going about their day-to-day life Mm. And they just go road on the street and mm. just have their fingers crossed nothing crazy happens. Interesting. Yeah. I saw it happening the other day. But there's but 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 it's intentional. There's something about the film oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. within they, the writing that they want it to be natural. Yeah. Huh. So I've done scenes where they've had five or six hundred people creating like a super busy street mm. and other scenes where they have thirty people and everybody else is just regular. Okay. Okay. So then why in that case, why do we why do uh, directors, why do films use supporting artists? What is what is the point in it, from your because, perspective? Because it gives them a certain level of control mm. for the main close-up scenes, whereas people far away on another street, but that can still be seen, it's not that important. Mm. But they want to have control over what's happening close to camera. So they call it deep background and featured. Do you think it enhances the level of acting that we're watching from the actors itself? Absolutely. Okay, that's interesting. It helps them to recreate what they're trying to do properly. So if they're pretending to have a meal in a restaurant and the restaurant's empty because there's no supporting artist mm. inside, they'll throw them off. Yeah. But if they're like, come on, guys, act like you're act like it's a Friday night and everyone's excited to go out and give it a bit of life. Mm. So it helps create that certain mood and energy for them. Interesting, because what I was thinking about it was like... Um, at least sometimes when I do tasks or like when I, when I read a book, I can't just sit there and read a book and it'd be pure silence because then my brain goes to other places. So to keep that part of my brain kind of focused, like if I'm on the train, I've finished two books now, almost two books being on the train here. Wow. Because partly because there's so much going on that that part of my brain is distracted and then I can just like focus oh, in on this see. book and get right through it. So I was thinking about the, the same thing with the film as in like the, other part of your brain is kind of distracted so you're just focused like you said you're you're, you're enhancing the acting mm. but i was thinking that the acting the, from the main actors doesn't have to be top to, top, to that top quality because your other brain is distracted but what you're saying is it actually enhances allows yeah, us to focus them. on it more yeah. so for example exodus when the crowd is doing what mm. we're doing it helps the main actor performing like oh wow this is actually Oh, and it, and it helps the real the actor yeah, themselves. Okay, so it puts you into that, into the actual zone of what's going oh, on. Definitely. Wow. Okay. Okay. So so it definitely has an effect on our psyche, but also the actor's psyche, like the people involved within the film. That is interesting. Okay. All right. Now now what I'm wondering is, do you think the average audience can tell or feel the difference from well done acting from the supporting artist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, It's evident. It's too evident. Sometimes. Give me an example. Uh-huh. I've seen examples where things have gone wrong and the person's pretending to lift the box, but she's not 
I feel like there's something in the box that mm. swishes up and then it's like, that, that's not right. Mm. Or when somebody's pretending to drink a coffee in a coffee shop and they're like just moving it around erratically, nothing spilling out. Mm. So you still have to be focused and do things as it would be in real life. Because mm. people, people will look at it and go, they, they might not be conscious of it, but subconsciously they're like, something. That's not how you move a box. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's a subconscious thing we pick up on, right? Yeah, and if it keeps happening in a film, it would be like, there's something wrong with this film. Do you think that's why sometimes we don't like certain films? Because, the, because I mean, okay, besides the um, acting itself and the set and the writing, that it could just be the, the supporting artist that's throwing off our subconscious? It's possible. If if it keeps on happening continuously yeah. In, the, yeah. in the film or scene. Yeah. It becomes an irritant. It's like when they do a he dialogue heavy scene, mm. they get us to mime mm. instead of speaking. So if the wait, wait, when they're when they're when the actor's speaking, oh, they mime, so wow, so be quiet, wow. so we're like, it's crazy. <laughs> so if you're just like, uh, like a zombie, yeah, it translates into screen. Uh, do they ever actually get anybody inebriated on set? What's that? What's that? Inebriated, like meaning um, drunk or oh yeah, high. as in as in essays or main, the main people. Both. Um, there there have definitely been occasions where people are under the influence of certain things. Showing so, up, or do they, they ask them to be for the? Oh no no, for insurance purposes, you can't do it mm. for the scene. Mm. But obviously, under the table, sometimes something can happen. You know. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah you yeah. know what I'm saying, homie? I do I do I get you. Wow. But that, nearly all the actors they know how to pretend to be high or drunk. They've got their bill of spirits, so then they don't need to take the substances. Mm. Mm. So do do ever main actors to start as supporting artists, or oh, is this kind of like two different? Oh, really? A lot, yeah. Especially back in the day, mm. in America there's an easier route. I think Brad Pitt was a supporting, supporting artist. Uh, there's tons of people who start off that way. Interesting. They get seen, and they're like, oh. Give him, give him the role. Give him mm. a scripted bit. Give him, okay, he's not going to be the main taxi driver or the main actor, and then he's going to come back in season two, and then from the taxi driver, he's going to become a part of the mafia, and then he's going to build his way up. That happens so long as you fit what they're looking for. Do you see yourself moving up, or do you enjoy where you're at? Um, 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 I've done scripted roles before, okay. although they're small. Uh -huh. To have a whole production on his shoulders as a main actor, you need to love acting because it's not a joke. You have so many people who are relying on you mm -hmm. and you need to have a natural passion for it or you need to have gone through the necessary training to mm -hmm. deliver what's required. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can just randomly do. Just pick up random, okay. Yeah, certain things, yeah. which certain small scripted roles, you can just do them because you already have life experience. So my last project that I done in a scripted role, I was a football team member. I played football in the past, so that was relatively easy. You mean soccer? Uh -huh. Not football. Would you foot? <laughs> soccer. <laughs> Get that shit in, man. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So what? Arsenal, Barcelona, the, all of the good teams. Football. <laughs> football. <laughs> For the man them listening. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. Uh, where have you traveled so far for your filming? Mm. That's the cool thing about also why I brought Simone on because he's a well seasoned traveler, loves to travel, going to Morocco soon. Yes, Morocco's nice. Certain bits are nicer than others in terms of what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. In my own capacity, I've been to Slovakia, Hungary, One, two, France, three, Morocco, four, uh, Italy, five. Addis, Six. a lot of other places that I'm blanking on. Didn't you go to New Zealand? No, that was in my dream, but not yet. Oh. <laughs> Australia? <laughs> not Australia. Man. I'm good. I'm, I'm good on them long, long flights. Um, US you've been to? I've been to the of US. The US is just at the bottom of the list. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got nothing to defend here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> People think they can offend me when they talk about the US. No. Sardinia was actually amazing. Sardinia? It's Sardinia, Italy. Oh, okay. So in Italy, I've been to Sardinia. Is it Sardin Venice. Are the sardines tasty? Uh, they're nice, <laughs> but the Portuguese sardines are the best, apparently. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you been to Portugal? Not yet. Not Lisbon, okay. I haven't been to Portugal, to Spain. 
I've been to Germany. But yeah. Wait, haven't you been to other African countries? I've been to Eritrea, but I was very small. Okay. I've been to Dubai as a child. Okay. Once again, very young. Yeah. So just Morocco and those other four countries? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Planning to go more soon? Yes, indeed. For filming or just for leisure? Uh, it depends. So we were meant to do a lot of traveling the summer that COVID hit. So uh, some people went to Sardinia. I think it was Sicily. I think Sardinia. Land of the Sardines? For Little Mermaid. Okay. That makes <laughs> see it makes sense now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and others went to Malta for that zombie film with Brad Pitt. Oh, World this War Z. oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking Zombieland. Okay. They're currently doing Gladiator Two in yeah, one yeah, of the yeah, islands, one of the that. countries. Yeah. Um. Was it Malta? You were telling me. I can't remember. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Denzel. Yes. Mm. I gotta watch I that. Saw the picture. It looks good. Of Denzel. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing Hannibal. Yes, finally. Yeah, Some yeah. legit history. Yeah, yeah. So, um, when it comes to actors, who who do you rank at the top and why? Hmm. Just accomplishments. Daniel Day Lewis, I think, is a proper gets into character. Yeah, yeah. Transforms, makes you believe. Yeah. In terms of entertainment, Denzel was phenomenal in Training Day and Malcolm X. Of course. In the last Equalizer, where he was a bit funny, I like that. Yep. DiCaprio's cool. I like his Catch Me If You Can, but I like that. I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of DiCaprio. Of oh, DiCaprio, okay. Yeah. I like the film though. The film was very interesting. The film was very nice. Yeah. The Departed was very nice. Okay. And I'm into world cinema. Okay. The Raid Part Two, as I've. Yeah, you were telling me about the Raid. Very too. good. Very good acting. Yep, very good drama. Yep. yep. Technical back. issues. Um. Yeah, you were saying DiCaprio, and then you said uh, Raid 2. Okay, okay. All right, well, I have just a couple more questions. I do have a flight to catch today back to the States because that's how we do it here on Nomadius. Mm-hmm. Always moving. Um, just along the lines, well, what's a question you wish that people asked you more? What's your favorite book? What, hmm, what's your favorite book? The Hermetical. Why? Lost Wisdom of the Pharaohs. Okay, Why? What's talk or, about? There's another one called The Science of Being Rich and the Science of Being Great. Oh, I think I've seen that one. Okay. What well, what's so interesting about these books? Why should the person listening right now read because these books? They give you a glimpse into the thinking of the ancient Egyptians. Mm. And they were masters of spirituality and nature and human ascension to a higher level of thinking not to get too technical oh you can it's okay this is the human nature podcast <laughs> so okay. okay so yeah lost wisdom of the pharaohs the hermetica okay and the science of being great and the science of being rich yeah it's 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 a simple way of just changing the way you look at things and the way you actually view yourself and then that has the power to just bring in better things into your life mm. Do you consider yourself a rich person? Yes. There you go. In many, in many facets and aspects. Totally, totally, totally. Totally, dude. Yeah, you know that. You, that you know that Bob Marley interview. Everybody's seen it. He says, uh, "Where he said I'm rich because I split, I smoke ganja all day." Yeah, did he say that? <laughs> no, <he didn't. laughs> it's like that's not I don't know why. Uh, but he does say something about the rust and the herb. I want something like that. But no, he says um, the he was guy. A prophet. He was way ahead of his time. Yeah, he says. The guy asks him, do you consider yourself rich? And then he says, when you say rich, do you, you mean like possession? And then he's like, he's like, if that's the case, uh, no, because my richness is life. And that always changed my mind since I was, since I was young. So um, I don't like to see myself as a, as a poor or broke person. I think I'm, I'm definitely rich because richness isn't whatever you choose it to be. I think wealth is different. Wealth can be broken down to uh, physical wealth, mental wealth, and this is kind of wealth is health. So it's kind of the same things. So um, I think a lot of the times when people say we're not rich, we're talking about finances, mm. but and that's fine. Um, but you just got to be specific. Don't don't let it um, over 
encapsulate the other parts of life, yeah, other so, sections into life, right? So the, another good book is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Dale Carnegie. There we go. Yep. So there's an ancient, I think it might be Chinese, says you can buy an inch of gold with an inch of time, but you can't buy an inch of time with an inch of gold. Mm -hmm. So don't accumulate assets ruining your life. Let the assets enhance your life. You get me? Yeah, I get you, fam. I get you. Wow, that's deep. Wow, that's interesting. Oh, I'm just beginning. Yeah, yeah. Summertime, reload. Oh, yeah, we're gonna be, I'm coming back in the summer, so we're going to do part two when I'm back. But I think, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's time. Um, is there anything else you want to share with the people while, you, while we're here? Listen to Bob Marley, listen to Michael Jackson. Yeah, okay. Listen to Tupac and actually dig deep into their lyrics. Mm what they were trying to translate. Mm. All of them had prophetic powers. So Michael Jackson, for instance, he was talking about it doesn't matter if you're black or white and he was changing the psyche of America through music. He was showing people on screen their ancient history that's been suppressed whilst repeating, do you remember the time mm. when we fell in love? But the main points were, do you remember the time a whole bunch of other stuff that he was mentioning that's gone on under, under the radar the earth song in the late 90s or yeah late 90s about yep. how we have to look after the planet yeah these people were way ahead of the time and this stuff is still relevant yep interesting you bring up michael jackson you know that song human nature by michael jackson mm -hmm. i was in los angeles i had already started this podcast uh, at least I created it a while ago. I'd only started recently actually uploading uh, in the past month or so. But um, we were visiting a friend's um, house and uh, I was in the car about to t pick up EOL um, or ISCA, I one of them, my younger brothers. And I was waiting for it. To, so I was uploading it onto Spotify. And as soon as it uploaded, I had the radio on 94.7 in, in uh, Los Angeles, the wave. So it's like old school radio. And the name of the podcast is Our Human Nature. And I kid you not, Human Nature by Michael Jackson came on the exact moment I uploaded it. And that was for me, it was just like fate. It was destiny. It's like divine timing. I'm in the right place. And this song is just, I even, I even kind of. The song didn't really come to me. wasn't one of the reasons that I started the podcast, but just to see that synchronicity mm. uh, was very important to me. So um, I say that to say that you mentioned Michael Jackson, but to people who are trying to create or who are creating, the thing about creating that we got to realize, <clears throat> it doesn't mean that like me creating was not me uploading the podcast. Me creating was once I had already came up with the idea. Now, now you're, you have steps in your creation. So you came up with the idea, then you actually make it tangible, tangible you materialize it, and then you start to create more and you share more. And then from, th from there on, you kind of just, you keep going. So what, I, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that whatever is already in your head is meant for you to put out there. I like to say, whatever you see is missing out in the world is for you to do. So get out there, create. Oh, I'm always creating. You're always creating. We're creating through our thoughts. We're creating through our actions. We're creating through um, our emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's because we're just, you know, exquisite human beings. So is there anything you have to promote for yourself, um, Simone? Anything, social media, anything you want to promote? Peace and love. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share. Thank you so much for Summer joining time. me here, Simone. We'll be back for Carnival. We're going to have some dope uploads then. If you don't know what Carnival is. plus material. Yeah, there you go. Uh, make sure to check it out. It's going to be on my members only section. Okay, so uh, make sure to subscribe to the members only videos. So you can get exclusive content that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Um, because you deserve it. You deserve good like, content. subscribe, follow. All of that. All, all of that. that good stuff. Got to catch a flight now. So, Nomadius, we're going to see you soon.